And, you know, not to mention, blacklist me from getting work. So, I was told, you know, um, when the article finally hit, I just sobbed. I burst into tears because I had tried to send all this information over and I did send some documentation to them. It proved, proved that they knowingly defamed me and maliciously defamed me. And I just cried and cried and cried. And probably I've stated that the most I've ever cried was when I felt betrayed by the, the monks and the, and the abbey there and what they did to me by using police. I mean, that was such a shock. I honestly did my most crying of my life probably at that time just because it was such a shock to me. But having that article come out would probably be the second thing that I cried about the most because I was again shocked that after what they first did that was so illegal and wrong that they would even go further with, with this. So, um, police were involved in helping and assisting the Willamette Week in writing this horrible story about me and trying to harass me and ticket me falsely. Um, while I was being interviewed for the story. So there's a lot going on with, with police and FBI. After the article came out, I pleaded for retractions because by law there's, they're required to print retractions on anything that's false and defamatory. I met, I was very nice, I was very patient and, you know, pleading for someone to be reasonable about what had been written and to please just do the right thing. So, you know, I, I was just now then being mocked by Detective Brian Gross who said they were dropping my rape charges and all of that. And being mocked about how I need to just get a different coat and maybe change my name. And so I met with Richard Meeker. I didn't um, they wanted me to meet with him instead of Amy Rowe. So I met with him several times and sat down with him and tried to work something out. I just asked him, okay, well, this is, this is an incorrect date here and it makes it look like I committed some kind of a crime here. Can you please, here's my evidence, can you please correct this? And he refused. So they were getting very nitpicky. They were trying to say, you know, we'll, they basically said, We'll say your hair is strawberry blonde if you want us to, instead of fiery red, but we're not going to correct the part where it says you were trespassing on Abbey property when you never trespassed on that property. And, you know, they were saying, we'll change the, I guess it wasn't 10 o'clock, was it? It was 9 o'clock, they might say. And since it doesn't really matter and the time makes no difference on this point, we'll change that for you, but we're not going to change the idea that after they asked you not to come onto their property, you, you know, we lied and said that you did several times and the police then put you under investigation. So, they basically refused to print any retractions that were worth retracting. And after I tried to politely, sincerely negotiate with these people for a couple of months, I realized they just put their foot down and, and that was it. They went all the way to the top and the head of the newspaper wanted me to be as smeared as possible. That was to his liking. And worked for the people that wanted to avoid being, um, I guess avoid being questioned for unlawful law enforcement collusion with parties that were adversarial towards me and they wanted to make me look bad so that my rape claims look I was discredited for my rape claims and it also weakened my position in the future because now if anyone did something to me all they had to do was point to this article that made me sound crazy and and others felt that they could do more to me so and that's what happened, because then 
I was um, filing those lawsuits, trying to pursue those things. Then, of course, my mail was being disrupted. I had a bunch of problems with that. And then I was meeting the FBI person in the elevator. And I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Because I first needed to talk about what the Willamette Week was hiding and how they colluded with police and law enforcement to conceal evidence of crimes and how very likely they also had police that were falsely ticketing me and judges that were covering that up and causing those cases to disappear. So, while they were interviewing me. It was very nasty and I have no doubt whatsoever that Amy Rowe has had a lot of help from FBI friends. And so we'll get into that tomorrow. Thanks for your time, wherever you are. And I'm really just It's just, it's just the beginning of then everything going downhill. Because once they discredited me through that article, and then once they u used police and FBI to keep me from pursuit, from you know being successful and proving that I was defamed, that's all they needed to then start torturing me worse than they were with migraines already, military-triggered migraines, they did far, far worse.